Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for participating. I'm honored to be teaching you. I'm here in Woodstock, New York, which is about two hours north of New York City. And we have a beautiful dojo here in the country. Um, my sensei is Konigsberg Sensei, and this is his dojo. And I've been teaching in children's class here for 25 years. I also teach at the Buddhist elementary school, middleway school, that actually has Aikido as their Frisee program, which is really cool. So what's interesting is we're in a time now with the pandemic, which has changed everybody's life. In fact, after being here every Saturday to teach the kids for a long, long time, I haven't actually been in the dojo until today for so long. I, I, I miss it so much, and I'm sure you all miss things that you would typically do in going to school or hang out with your friends, or the movies, or ice skating. And um, you're, everything's changed now. But there is some good in that, in that it's time that we could be introspective. And introspective means we could think deeper about some things that we do all the time that we may not be conscious of while we're actually doing it. But now we have the time and the space and the extra energy to do that. So what I found with Aikido with kids is that often I hear some a kid be asked, hey, you do Aikido, what's Aikido all about? And they would say, well, grab my wrist and I'll show you. And then we do a technique. Or they would say, well, she does that. And then when she does that, I do this. But I'd like to explore for a minute in kind of a fun, interesting way about what the, the push and pull and the dynamics of Aikido actually is. So for the first thing, Let's just take our two hands and put them up like this. And I'm gonna pick one that is gonna be nage hand. And this one's gonna be uke hand, right? So this is you and this is your partner. So if you could do this along with me, put your two hands up, pick one hand that's gonna be you and one hand that's gonna be your uke. And I want you to just clap your hands as hard as you can 10 times in a row. And I'm gonna to count it. To. So here we go. One. And what did you feel? And what I felt is that my hands sting a little bit from that. It hurts. In Aikido, you never want to experience this collision, this crash, these two forces of energy coming into each other. So let's, with our two hands, let's demonstrate to ourselves a few ways that in Aikido, we keep that from happening. So we have our nage hand, pick the nage hand, pick your uke hand, and put them both together with your fingers up in the air. And I want you to push as hard as you can with both of them. And right now I feel like neither hand or arm is stronger because it's me and they're both equally as strong. So no one's gonna win this battle. It's not gonna go here, here. It's gonna be somewhere in the, right in the middle because we're both pushing. And what's going on here? This one has a force going this way, and this one has a force going that way, and we stuck. And we don't want that to happen in Aikido. So push as hard as you can, and you can be like that all day, and nothing's gonna change. So in Aikido, we don't confront that force, which is coming right this way, with the same force going the other direction, because we would, and nothing would be accomplished that way. So let's figure out an Aikido technique that we could do with these two hands. Take your nage hand, which is pointing up, and instead of pushing it right this way into here, we're going to tip it over, and then we're going to fly it out like an airplane. So we're gonna curve it down, and then we're gonna swing it out there. So try that with your nage hand. Instead of this, it's gonna be this, and then a koku movement out here here and here. And now let's see what happens when we do this nage technique to this uke hand. So push together. Everyone got that push happening? Both strong. And take your nage hand now and watch this magic that happens when you just do this and that. Whoa. This strength that is really strong, equally as strong as this, all of a sudden it's not there anymore as soon as you get to here. And now the nage hand could just take this and pin it down to the ground. So let's try that together. Have your push. When I say three, do the technique. One, two, 
three, and that dissipates the strength of this uke hand. So nage hand, get ready. One, two, three. And you can see how easy it is with the same, this arm isn't getting any stronger. You didn't stay home and lift weights for 10 minutes. You're just using this motion that is not right into here. It spirals here and around and down. So one more time, push with this hand, push with this hand. And instead of pushing right into here, you're gonna go around that strength and spiral that down. So that shows the dynamics of Aikido when two forces are meeting each other that are equal. Now, what happens now when you don't want to go against this force at all? You just want to let this force go. You don't want to disturb it. So now here's your two hands. Here's your uke hand. We're just going to let this travel and we're going to get alongside of it, get behind it. And now we can pin it that way because we're using this motion. We're not confronting it at all. We're letting it go, letting it go. We get alongside of it, put your hand between your face and the bouquet hand, gonna get behind it and pin it down to the ground. So one more time, have your two hands up, your uke hand slowly moves, and now the nage hand sneaks around the side of it, sneaks around the back of it, and then accelerates it down to the ground. And we could also, instead of going to this side, we could go to this side. So now uke hand comes, sneak around the back of it, get behind it, and accelerate it down to the ground. So we have two things in Aikido now that we just did with our two hands. One where we take that force away and around. This one where we let it go and we take it from behind and around. But that brings up another element of Aikido that's very, very important. And that's called my eye. It sounds like my eye, though it's spelled a bit differently. My eye basically is the space, the distance between nage and uke. So everything in the middle here is the my eye between these two hands. So if you take your two hands, your nage hand and your uke hand, and you lean them forward as if you're reaching out towards your partner. Right now, the Mai is between these fingers. And the Mai is safe because this hand can't do anything to this unless it moves this way. And this hand can't do anything to this one unless it moves this way. So right now, the Mai is good. You're safe. When it gets here, it's still safe. You can't touch each other. But whoa, move your hands closer together. And all of a sudden, at this point, these fingers can touch. When that happens in Aikido, when the other person gets too close to you, you have to start doing an Aikido technique because you can't stand there when they get closer, 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 and all of a sudden they get to do to you whatever they want. So I want you to try to judge your my eye. This is your spot right here where these two fingers can lean forward and meet. That's when this nage hand has to do the technique. So as uke comes, gets a little too close right here. That's when the nage hand moves to the side, moves around the back and accelerates it down to the pit. One more time, move your uke hand, judge that distance. Right when nage hand gets a little uncomfortable right here, it has to start the technique, get behind, accelerate it down to the ground. With the other technique where we went forward, the same thing. When this uke hand gets too close, nage hand has to move in quickly and do the technique pushing that force around and down. So again, you've got two choices now. One, move that uke hand, nage hand comes forward quickly, connects, spirals it down, or uke hand comes and nage hand gets to the side, goes around and brings it down to the ground. So using the two hands, you could easily demonstrate what Aikido is. Safety, safety, safety. All of a sudden, this hand gets a little uncomfortable and it has to initiate a technique. And it has to not, in either way, it has to not confront this force with another force. It has to 
move that force, move around that force to do your Aikido technique or move away from that force and connect with it and accelerate it down. So it's interesting when you think about Aikido that way in that you don't want this to happen at all. You don't want to feel that connection, feel that clash. Even when they meet, it's gentle and then it accelerates. It's not that and accelerates. It's gentle movement and it's relaxed. I want you now to think about, it's a good time when you're being introspective with whatever you do, whether it's playing an instrument or how you do your schoolwork or how you have fun when you're home by yourself a lot. Being introspective and let's go through some foundational elements of Aikido. There's a number of them. And there's a number of them that I feel are really important that took me a, a long time to, to figure out. A lot of the, by foundation element, I mean like a foundation of a house. When you go to the bottom of a house, underneath the house, it's made of brick or it's made of stone or it's made of concrete, something really solid. Everything else is built upon that. If you were to look at a foundational element of riding a horse, you would be sitting in a saddle. You'd have your feet in the stirrups. You'd be holding on to the reins. You wouldn't be riding a horse standing up, you know, riding backwards, riding sideways. If you're playing baseball, you would hold a bat a certain way. You would have a glove on a certain way. Every time you look at a baseball player or a horseback rider, they would have these same things going on, no matter whether they're going over jumps on the horse or whether they're going back to, to catch a fly ball. There's certain things that are basic elements of what you're doing. And in Aikido, there's a number of basic elements and they're all very, very, very logical and simple. The hard part of Aikido is that there's a number of them and you have to put them all together at the same time. So let's use this time now to break down, well, maybe we get through six or eight of them today. And I want you to think about them after this class and this class would be archived you could go back and look at them and maybe pick one and just practice that one for a while. Okay, first one, relaxed. Upstate New York here, it's super cold out today. It's like nine degrees. When you go outside, your body naturally wants, feels a cold and it wants to go like this, right? So I want everyone now to use your imagination and pretend you're super cold all of a sudden. You're open the door, the wind's blowing, the snow's blowing, and you go, oh my God, it's cold out. You tense up, now feel what that feels like. Your shoulders are tense, your shoulders come up, you're wrapping yourself around like you have a blanket in your arms. Feel what that feels like because you never ever want to feel that way when you do Aikido. You want to be totally relaxed. Next time, if you live in an area that's cold, next time you go out for the rest of the winter, I'd like you to practice your Aikido and just walk out like this. Don't go like this, don't tense anything up. Say, I'm training my Aikido today, walking to the car, walking out to play with my dog. I'm just gonna stay relaxed and not let my body tense up because when people do Aikido, often they tense up different muscles and that keeps the Aikido from working well. So, Foundational element, big words, number one, be relaxed. Foundational Aikido element number two, you have a center. So I want you to take, use your imagination again, take a pretend Sharpie or magic marker, take the lid off, and you're gonna draw an imaginary line from the middle of your head, through the middle of your eyes, down your nose, down your lips, under your chin and all the way down to your belly button. So you have, I have a black magic marker. You can use a red one or they make you know, silver ones and gold ones. Make a line, don't do it for real. Because your mom and dad will get mad at me. Pretend line right down your body. That's the center of your body. Whenever you bring your arms up in Aikido, they go to the center of your body. You don't bring your arms up in Aikido over here. It's always here, right in the middle. So everything comes to this spot. So I'm gonna stand up now. So if you are in say, so please stand up. And we're gonna stand with our legs sideways, not in Hanmi, but our legs side to side. And we're gonna take one of our arms and we're just gonna swing it like we're outside 
just hanging around, wait for the school bus and we're bored and we're just swinging our arms, they're very relaxed. Remember none of this, just relax, swing of your arms. And you can see what happens, your body naturally will bring your arm while it's down here, right to the center. And as you swing it with more energy, it will come up your center and it'll be here. So let's do that 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a very relaxed movement. It doesn't take much energy at all. And you could probably do a couple of hundred of these before your arms even felt like they were getting tired. Now let's do something we don't want to do in Aikido. Bring your arms up here. So we're going to do that ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What did that feel like to you? To me, I felt like these muscles that are used to bring my arms up here, I could feel them get, you know, slightly tired after 10. If I did 50 or 100, boy, my arms would be tired because I'm using my muscle strength and muscle energy to bring my arms up here, which is what you don't want to do in Aikido. You want it to just to be here nice and relaxed. So take one arm again and swing it and see how it naturally comes into your center. And every time you do Aikido, whatever the technique is, if you took a video of advanced adults doing Aikido and then took all the little frames, all the little snapshots, any given one, I would pretty much guarantee that at any time during the technique that their hands are right about here in their center. So let's get in Hanmi now. Swing that arm in front of your center. Now, what happens when you do an Aikido and someone pulls your arm out here? All of a sudden, it's not in front of your center anymore. How do you get this hand back in front of your center? So you guys are probably pretty smart. How many different ways are there to bring this hand, get this hand back in front of your center? There's three different ways. Simplest way, take this hand that's out here and just put it in front of your center. So let's try that. Bring your hand out to the side. We don't want it there when we do Aikido. Bring it in front of your center. Really easy, right? Make that correction here. Way number two, hand is here. It's maybe someone's holding on to it. Your practice partner's you know, pulled it over there and you have to align your center to that hand again. So it's, you're not able to pull it over here. It's stuck because someone's holding it. But the easy thing to do is just take your center down. Everyone do this. Your hand's here, turn your center to face your hand. So let's do that again. Throw your arm out to the side and adjust the center of your body. Turn to center it here. So way number one, bring the hand here. Way number two, bring your center to face your hand. What is way number three? Hmm. Way number three is a combination of both of them. So instead of just bringing the hand here, while the body stays here, or bringing the body here while the hand stays here, they both start moving together and you meet somewhere in the middle. So let's try that. Hands out here, adjust your body and your hand together. Now let's try it, turn it into an exercise. And I want you to just throw a hand out any place you want. It could be behind you, off to the side, over here. So just swing your arm out. And when I say three, Make your center adjust to your hand or make your hand adjust to your center or make both of them adjust at the same time. So throw your hand out. It could be, you don't have to do exactly like me, but it has to be not in your center. And now one, two, three, adjust. Somewhere else, one, two, three, center. Behind me, one, two, three, center. Over here, one, two, three, center. Over here, one, two, three, center. Over here, one, two, three, center. Back here, one, two, three, center. So you see, it's pretty easy to change this. What is hard is when you're doing an Aikido technique to remember that, wait a second, my hand's here, it shouldn't be out there. Or it's here, it shouldn't be out there. It should be here. Right in that Sharpie line that you did. 
All right, so our foundational elements. Relax, go to this. Everything's in front of your center. Foundational Aikido element number three. I want you to take one hand and put it on your shoulder and take this arm that you're pushing down on your shoulder with on and swing that arm up, right? So you're swinging this arm while you're holding down your shoulder. And what you're gonna discover is your arm will only go this high. That's as far as it goes, unless I take my hand off my shoulder and then my shoulder could come up to bring my arm up further. So check that out here, swing your arm. I can't raise my shoulder because I'm pushing down on it. When I take my hand off, I could go further. When Aikido, you don't want to go any higher than this. You don't want your shoulder to come up out of its socket because when it's like this, if something's pushing against it, you have your whole hanmi, your whole body is against this. But as soon as it gets up here and your shoulder comes up, that can be pushed behind you because you don't have your body supporting it. All of a sudden it's just this arm hanging out by itself. Yeah. But here, up to here, it's supported by your whole body, by your hanmi. So your arms in Aikido will be in your center. And when you raise them up and down during the technique, they won't go any higher than this and they won't go any lower than this. Just like when you raise a sword, it's right here, from here to here, here to here, here to here, right in your center. So again, if you took a video of an advanced student in Aikido doing Aikido at any point of that technique, almost always you will see their hands here. And if their hands come up, they're not any higher than this, they're not any lower than this. All Aikido is done right in this little spot. It's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple thing that took me maybe 20 years to figure this out, right here. Okay, the other thing, next foundational element is gravity. And I have a 10 year old dog, an Aussie doodle, whose name is Tofu. And when Tofu wasn't looking this morning, I took one of the balls his little toy balls. And I'm gonna use this to demonstrate something about gravity. So you don't need a ball, you can just watch. When you throw a ball up, what happens? It goes up and it comes right back down. When it reaches its highest point, your energy is pushing it up, it reaches its highest point. It doesn't hang out there at this highest point for like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. It goes up and it comes right down. As soon as it reaches its top, it immediately comes down because gravity is pulling that ball down. Gravity is pulling that ball back down to the earth. And gravity is more stronger than you or I am, right? If you threw an elephant up in the air, gravity would pull it down. If you threw a minivan up in the air, gravity would pull it down. It will pull things down to the ground more than you could pull things down to the ground. If you threw this ball up, and it just stayed up there, you tossed it up and it just stayed there and didn't come down, you would freak out, right? You would call your mom and dad, your brother, sister, <laughs> what's going on here? There's balls up there like one of those helicopters that you used to get as a toy. We just hover it around. It doesn't do that. It goes up, it comes down, it goes up and comes down. So gravity is an important thing with Aikido because when you raise your arms up, they're in your center, they only go up to here. When you're doing an Aikido technique, you don't raise your arms up and keep them there and then move in position to do a Riminage or something with your hands up in the air for one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and then get in position and drop them. That's not a good way to do your Aikido techniques because just like moving your arms up here, you're using your muscles to bring them out here to hold them up. Using your muscles, once they come up, gravity will bring them down. If they stay up, you're using your muscles to keep them there and you don't want to do that. So you have to time your technique so that as you raise your arms up, they reach the highest point and they come back down. So let's try that together. I'm just gonna be in a simple hanmi and you're gonna throw your arms up and they're gonna reach that point, high point, like they're two balls and they come right down. 
right? And now try it away where you don't want to do in Aikido. We'll hold them up here. You can feel immediately that you're using these muscles to keep them suspended in the air because gravity is pulling them down. Your energy has to go against gravity and you don't want that tension in your arms and your body when you do Aikido. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Highest point, down, highest point, down. And now we're gonna do our simple tank con and raise our arms up and down. So do this with me, up and down. So time it so it's not this and then a step and then a turn and then down. Everything happens together. High point, down, high point, down, high point, down, high point, down, high point, down. Slow, high point, down. Fast, high point, down. Medium, high point, down. So you time your whole body movement with this movement of your arms coming up and down. So if you were doing a Riminage, you would come in and you would practice and train so you could get in the exact spot that you have to be to the side behind the person and they have their head and it comes down. You don't want to come in and keep your hands here and then get in position from one Mississippi to Mississippi and then let them come down. It's like a wave at the beach. So foundational element one, relax, right? Number two, hands are in front of your center. Number three, they only go this high. Number four, when they go up, they come right down. They don't stay up there. You don't get strong and keep them there because then you have to disengage your muscles to make the move. So just relax again, swing your arms, swing your arms, feel that nice, easy, relaxed motion. Okay, next foundational element. When you raise your arm up by swinging it, as you can see me, I think I'm in a good camera spot for that. You can see the natural curve of your arm. In Aikido, you don't wanna have your arm fully extended and move like that. And you don't wanna move it in close to your body here. If you swing your arm from your shoulder, it has this natural curve where if I stopped at any point, like here, it's this distance from my body. If I go a little higher, it's this distance from my body. If I go a little higher, it's this distance from my body. Anything else you do is not the natural way your body wants to be. If you even here, you are using again your muscles to put your arm out here and it's not connecting so well to your center. So this is the distance your arm has from your body. And if you need your hand because of how you, you're doing the technique and someone's holding on to you, if you need your hand to be a foot over that way, you don't just reach out like that when you do Aikido, you move your whole body there. So let's practice that. Swing your arm up and subyash forward because I want my hand to be here. I don't want it to be there like that. I want it to be straight in good harmony and bring it forward and bring it back. So let's do this six times. One, two, three, four, five, six, change harmony. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll never reach out in Aikido. So always move your whole body so your hand can stay that same curve distance from you. Next foundational element. Most times when your arm goes from here to there, instead of just moving like this, there's a twisting motion that your arm does. It's called kokyu. It's a very important element of Aikido. We saw it when we did this technique. We turned this arm, we twisted it around, right? We did this. So if you explore the range of motion in your arm, get in Hanmi, put your arm out here. You could go thumbs down. And if you turn it, you could go palms up. If I went any further this way, I'd have to twist my body to get it there. And if at thumbs down, I went any further, I'd have to twist my body this way because my arm doesn't really want to go anymore. 
it's like a quarter return, quarter return, quarter return. I can't do this last quarter return in my arm in and of itself. Well, there's our range of motion. So when you move your arm in Aikido, instead of doing this, when the arm goes forward, if we start with palms up, and do this with me, as you move forward, it'll be palms down, thumb down, and then move back, palm up. So let's try that. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Start with palm up, go forward, thumb down, go back, palm up. Again, palm up, move forward, thumb down, move back, palm up, coke And now we're gonna start with thumb down, move forward, palm up, move back, thumb down. Forward, palm up, back, thumb down. Forward, palm up, back, thumb down. So as you can see in Aikido, there's a lot of different little things about the movement, very subtle. And all of them by themselves, they're very simple. When you put them all together and have to do them all at once, that's when it becomes more challenging. And that's why this time of introspection is good to try to recognize all of them and be aware of them. It's no different than playing a musical instrument where you may think about scales and chords and reading music and everything. But when you play for people, you just play. You don't, you, your brain doesn't have the time to think of all those things while you're actually making your body play guitar, play piano, play violin. And it's the same with Aikido. Think about these things when you're off the mat so that when you're on the mat, they maybe just become part of what you do. Automatically, you won't have your arm out here. You'll be here, you'll be here, you'll be here. No matter what movement you do, it's all in the same spot. Okay, next foundational element, breathe. So let's try something. Let's pretend we're gonna throw a ball. So we have our pretend ball. I want you to breathe in and hold your breath and throw the ball. So ready with me, breathe in, throw the ball, hold your breath, hold your breath. One more time, breathe in, hold your breath, throw the ball. That feels super weird, doesn't it? It feels like your body is just like not really doing it, all tense. Because naturally if you throw a ball, you'd breathe out. If you were a baseball pitcher or a quarterback throwing a football, you let your air out, you let your energy out. Same with Aikido. You don't want to do a tank on holding your breath. You don't want to do the exercise we did before, holding your breath. So let's try, let's try this movement. And we're going to go highest point, lowest point, And we're going to breathe in, breathe out. Again, in, out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. So the arms move like a wave and you breathe in. They come down like a wave crashing on the shore, you breathe out. It's logical. Your body wants to work that way. And you need to get all these things going at the same time, little by little as you train in Aikido. So your breath is very important. So relax, hands in front of your center. Your arm doesn't raise up any more than right here. Don't want your shoulder to come out. We've learned how to adjust our arms to our center. We talked about gravity, things coming up and down. They don't stay up there in Aikido. We learned that if you wanna move forward, you don't extend your arm out there, you move your whole body there. We learned that as your arm moves forward and backwards, it almost all the time does a Koki movement. And we've learned to breathe in and out along with our movement. Next foundational element. We've swung our arm like this and Hanmi got it in our center. And right now my body's pretty still and I'm just using my arm energy to swing. But when we do Aikido, we want all the movement to come from our center. 
and this is a challenging thing to do, to connect the two things, your arm with your center. Get in harmony, and we're going to swing our hip like this. So just try that, standing in harmony. You're wiggling side to side, not leaning over or anything. You're very straight, but this is going like this. And now as it, this hip goes forward, your arm swings up. Arm swings up, so try that with me. We'll do that six times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and change on me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, in some interesting things happen as you do that, as you move your hip. You can see that my front knee bends. Right? If my feet are staying in the same spot, my knee bends, 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 but my body doesn't lean over. So that's the hard part. You're moving this forward. Your knee is bending to get you over there, but your body stays straight. So try that again. I'll be sideways this time so you can see a little better. Swing your arm up, bend your knee, turn your hips. You don't really have to think that much about your knee because if you turn your hips and keep your feet where they are, your knee will naturally bend forward to give you that range of motion. Just really relax, swing that arm. Okay. okay, next foundational element. When you do Aikido, it's best if you don't lean over. Just like that, if you're pretending to hit a tennis racket, throw a baseball, throw a football. You don't see a football quarterback throw the ball and lean over. They can't see where the ball's going. Don't see a baseball pitcher pitch like that or playing tennis and bend down like that. You have to keep your body straight and throw here. There's your energy. Because remember, we talked about gravity. Gravity is pulling everything down to the ground. It's stronger than you. So you don't need, when you do a technique and throw someone, you don't need to throw them down to the ground. You need to throw them away from you because gravity is gonna make them go down. Just like a football quarterback doesn't think about the ball coming down. They know it's gonna come down. They're thinking about getting enough energy to throw it away from them get the distance that they need. And it's the same in Aikido. So if you were taking someone here and throwing them or doing a tank on and they're connected to you and you're throwing them, if you lean over, you're just bringing energy down to the ground. And if you're not, a, if you're a kid size or someone like me who's not real big, any energy I use going down is energy that I'm not putting into throwing away from me. And it's also, I don't need the energy going down because gravity is already going to put the person down or the ball down or the tennis ball or the football or the baseball. So keep in mind that you want to project out. And you can see that if I have a Joe, if I were chopping wood and the wood is there, yeah, I would focus on hitting it down. But if I was doing an Aikido technique, I just want to project out there, my mind is there, my intention is there, all my power from my whole body is right boom, there. And the motion is very similar to throwing the ball. It's like, it's here, and think of how far you could project that out beyond the tip of the jump, out beyond the length of your arms. So we have a lot of elements to put together when we do Aikido. And that is the reason it's quite challenging to all of us. Because all these little simple things, breathing, not leaning, being up straight, keeping things in your center, not tensing your muscles, not raising your arm too high, respecting gravity. All those things are simple by themselves. When you do your technique and put them all together, that's what you have to coordinate. 
It's like no different than riding a horse, playing the guitar, anything that you do. There's a lot of little things that have to connect. You connect all the dots together. The last thing I'd like to do, let's just practice the three strikes that we typically do. And we're gonna see how that all comes from moving your center and keeping everything aligned. So we're gonna do ski. Instead of going like that, we wanna swing our arm. So get in harmony. One, two, and the whole body moves. Nice and gentle. One, two, move this hip, move the side of the body forward. And that's the power of the strike. One, two, three, and it's right in your center. Your arm's not overextended. It's the same distance from your body as if you swung it up to parallel to the ground. It's not overextended and you're not looking down. So one, two, three. Same with showman, same motion with your body. Right? Raises up and comes down. Raises up, it comes down. Doesn't come down over here, doesn't come down over here. It comes down in the exact spot it would be if you swung your arm. Also, when you raise it up for showman, it raises up in the center of your body. It doesn't raise up over here. It comes to your center, raises up, and comes straight down that sharpie line. So together, showman, again, showman, and now ski, again, ski. If you look, the motion of your body is the same. And now Yokomen. Yokomen doesn't come out to the side and swing around like that. It comes up just like showman. You move your body forward. It comes down. It does a coqu movement where it twists and your back leg goes to the side a little bit. So here's Yokomen. This is not a good Yokomen. That's like how Derek Jeter holds a baseball bat. Well, that's not how we like to do Aikido. Here. So keep that in mind. You can see all those elements that we went through. They're right there in all the strikes that you do. They're right there in every technique that you do. They're right there every time you get on the mat doing Aikido. And it's a lot to, eat. It's a lot to think about. But now's the time where you're home alone a lot. You can think about all these things. So the next time you go to your dojo, you remember all these things together. So is there any announcements? We're about at the end of class now. Hi, thank you. We do have an announcement of our next class. It's going to be February 27th for a kid's class with Motier Haskins. Thank you very much, Ralph Sensei. You can bow us out. Time to bow? Hi. OK, thank you, everyone. Much enjoyed being with you today. Have a good week. And remember to practice your Aikido as much as you can. You'll get a lot out of it. And uh, I love you kids. Be good. Let's bow together.